Alright, so we've done the little stuff. We've done the snakes, the lizards, the turtles, but now we've moved on to the really serious thing, and that is the croc. Too many thoughts on my mind, I can't sleep at night, so I just keep writing. I don't need no help, I don't need opinions, so don't waste my time. Alright everyone, welcome back to another video. So what I'm doing today is I've got my GoPro and a few other cameras. I'm heading out into the bush, down my creek, pretty much anywhere, just close to my house, and I'm going to try find some reptiles. Now I've started a new series on my channel called How to Find Whatever in Australia. I've done spiders and snakes so far, and everyone has been commenting, do reptiles, we really want to see everything like that. So what I'm going to do is try find the three main species of reptiles turtles snakes and lizards now it's just come back into autumn at the moment so these guys should be everywhere so let's go and see if we can find some so another great place to look for reptiles is on these roads because what happens is the Sun since these animals are cold-blooded they need to heat up for the day so they come out onto this bitumen and often what will happen is you'll see dead reptiles all across the roads because they get hit by cars but it's not their fault but what we're gonna do is keep walking down this road see if we can find some heating up for the day so I've just spotted what I think is a blue tongue or pink tongue lizard sitting over on this driveway. So we're going to go move him off before he gets hit by a car. You can see, see oh, you can see him flashing that pink tongue. Now that's their way of saying, hey mate, back off. Now I don't think I'll even need to move him off the driveway. He seems like he's going to get off himself. But what they'll do is often people confuse him for the blue tongue lizard. But the obvious way to tell that they're not is that big pink tongue. Pig tongue, yeah. <laughs> Call me Albert Einstein. Oh, he just tried to go in my GoPro. Yeah. So as you can see, this lizard right down here has just camouflaged and a lot of the time when people are lowing, lowing their lawns, a lot of the time when people are mowing their lawns, people will run over them because they don't see them. And also one of their biggest threats is the feral cat and foxes which have been introduced here in Australia. So there we have it. I've literally only walked 40 meters away from my house and I've found this little pink tongue lizard. But there's a creek system just down here and a couple more paddocks. So I'm gonna head down that way and hopefully we can find some more cool stuff. So as you might have seen in my previous video, I've laid down about six or seven sheets of corrugated iron. Now what that does is since it heats up, since the tin heats up, snakes love it. So they go underneath it to keep warm and I'm going to check them all. Now there could be anything under here from cane toads, lizards, centipedes or even snakes, which is hopefully what we're going to find. A lot of mm. ants and take a look at that. A monster cane toad. Alright, I'm going to go pick it up. Third time lucky. All right, there we go. So that is the cane toad. Now, ever since these ugly guys have been introduced here into Australia, um, there's been a rapid decline in the reptile population, especially snakes like King Browns. Those guys have taken heavy hits from these guys because these glands behind here are filled with poison. You can see that. He's not happy about that at all. So what happened, right, was in the 1900s, these guys were introduced to help reduce the population of cane beetles. Now what cane beetles are, right, is they're a little beetle that were eating all the farmers' sugar cane. And some genius said, you know what, let's bring in a venomous toad into Australia to reduce the population of the cane beetle. But of course, what happened? These toads just totally ignored the cane beetles and they've spread all across Australia and they've been one of the worst things that have ever come to this country. So I'll just finish my discussion with this cane toad and then off we go. A lot of people might be wondering what that is right there. Now, I bought it to try and catch a fox, but 37 possums and 368 bandicoots later, and we still haven't caught one. Oh, Ooh. there we go. Small-eyed snake. Anyways, he's just taken off at the moment, but that was the small-eyed snake. Now, they're a highly venomous species of snake that lives here in Australia, and as you can see, this tin does work. He was just chilling under there, but what they'll do is he'll come out at night and he'll look for small frogs, small mammals such as mouses to come out and try and eat, but he's just gone Mice, into that. even. Mouses. Mouses. Did I say mouses? Hmm. Yeah. I love mouses to pieces. <laughs> yeah, but as I was saying, he'll eat. Frogs. <laughs> yeah. and mouses. Small mouses eyed snakes. Mm. But there we go. Bob's your small eyed mouse. About 32 mouses later, I decided to head down to the paddock to see if I could find any snakes basking in the sun. Some of these trees here might have some snakes in as well. Green tree snake right here. Take a look at that. Oh, he's going towards you. He's going towards you. It's a lot. He actually chasing. He likes me. He must be able to see good looking people. Yeah, because he's going away from you. <laughs> oh, he thinks you're a tree. Oh. Well, this isn't good, is it? He thinks I'm a tree. Yeah, I guess he does um, sense good looking people, Dad. Cool. He's 
sitting in the shadows. Yeah, so he's probably just got a bit of shade right now and he thinks I'm a tree or something and he's hiding behind me. So I'm just waiting for him to move on and hoping he doesn't bite. But if I was to get bitten by the species, it's a non-venomous species of snake. It's got no fangs, it's got no venom, but it would hurt a lot, especially on my back. So yeah, after letting that tree snake on its way, minutes later, I had found another one. You ready? He's gonna reach his body out and get up into this tree. Never mind. So these tree snakes, right, have specialized scales so they can climb trees like this and they are masters of it as they get their name, the tree snake. So when tree snakes get distressed, they'll let off this blue pattern on their body and sometimes they can turn fully blue from this green coloration that they have right now. But this one's going up the tree at the moment and he's not putting any blue coloration out, so he seems pretty chill. After the tree snake had disappeared into the tree, we spotted a massive snake making its way across the paddock right towards us. So we've just spotted a red belly black snake up here. This is the 10th most venomous snake in Australia. Now snakes are actually deaf and the only way they sense you is to feel vibration. So if I do this in the ground, I can definitely tell that he's aware of me right now. And these guys are in the same family as cobras. So what happens is if they get distressed, they'll flatten out their neck, puff it out and sometimes even stand up like a cobra. We've got to be very careful though, these guys are very quick. Now these guys are my favourite snake that we have out here. And the reason why I love them so much, that black coloration, it just glistens in the sun. And I could see this guy from 50 metres away coming towards us. And um, he'd be heated up for the day at the moment. Oh, he's starting to move. You know, this is what you really want. You want to be wearing Crocs when you've got a highly venomous snake in front of you. Now these guys are incredibly fast. He can cover this metre and a half that's away from him in a matter of a second. So I don't want to let him get too close. And since it is illegal to catch these guys, I'm just gonna let him be. Oh, yep, see, here we go. Looks like a fat noodle going across the ground. <laughs> and he's about to disappear into this bush at the moment. And off he goes. It's like a one out of a hundred chance I'm gonna find one, especially out in the middle of the paddock like that. <sighs> that is so cool. I'm speechless. Oh, he's come back again. He's back again. Oh, joking. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, good one, Dad. Good acting. Yeah. I wasn't scared at all. Yeah. That was my excited face. You know? I don't even know why he would have come back. So what he would have done, he would have seen me filming the green tree snake and he'd be like, hey, I'm the king around here. Get me on film. And the really cool thing about that snake, that could eat the green tree snake easy. Those snakes are cannibalistic. I've even seen them eating other red belly black snakes, which has been pretty crazy. But yeah, I'm glad that he's off that way and we didn't get bitten or anything. You know, that's always a positive when you're dealing with big venomous snakes like that. But um, I'm gonna keep heading up this paddock and see what else I could see. What's that? Two green tree snakes, pink tongue lizard, and a big red belly. That is so cool. So I've come down to my creek system. I've moved on from the paddocks and I'm gonna see if I can find a turtle. Now, it's very rare that I come down this creek and don't see a turtle. Uh, I've come down here for the past seven days and every time I've seen at least one turtle swimming around here. Now, the only turtles in this creek are saw shell turtles and they're really easy to see at this time. We've had a very dry winter. It's in autumn at the moment and the waters are very low. So it's really easy to see them. Often they're up sunning themselves on the rocks. So I'm just gonna keep walking up this creek and see if I can get one on camera. So. These turtles. There's a turtle. Where? He's climbing up the rock just around the corner there. Oh, there actually is a turtle. Look at that, that's a social turtle. Literally five minutes after I did that intro saying I'm gonna try to find a turtle, we find this little one. And by the looks of it, you can see the wet marks on the rock there. He was up on the rock sunning himself, so did he jump down? Yeah. Now the funny thing about this turtle, this species of turtle, they're the only turtle in Australia that can successfully eat and digest cane toads. Um, him and one other snake share that awesome um, adaptation. Ooh, good oh, word. big words. You wouldn't know I'm homeschooled. Spell it. AP. <laughs> the reason why these guys are called saw shell turtles is because the back of their shell is really jagged. I thought they were called saw shell turtles because you've stood on them so often. Saw shell. Oh, I'm on a roll. Because the rules um, here in Australia, you're not allowed to touch any native species that has a backbone, so you're all good with spiders, anything without a backbone. But when it comes to native species like this, if you touch them, you can get fined for it. So what happens is when these saw shell turtles get trapped in a pool or trapped in a dam and um, the water goes down, like often this winter has been very dry. This creek system has come up way up here all the way down to here. And when they get trapped in pools like that, 
they actually have to make the decision to just walk until they find water source. So the turtle's biggest predator is a croc. So in these creek systems, that's the real only thing that can actually kill them because they got that big hard shell on them. It's very hard, but crocs do it with ease. And what I'm gonna be doing next is tracking down a croc in this creek system and hopefully catching it. All right, so we've done the little stuff. We've done the snakes, the lizards, the turtles. Now that was really fun, but now we've moving on to the really serious thing and that is the croc. Now you've got to be very careful coming down to creek systems like this because these crocs have great memory. For instance, if you're going down to a creek system to brush your teeth or something when you're going camping, you wouldn't do that in the same place multiple nights in a row because that croc will remember that you're there and he'll get you second, third night. Whatever it is, he'll get you. And I know that there's a croc that lives in this pool down here. I've seen him multiple times. So I'm gonna go up and show you how to do it the Australian way. So this is the greatest reptile of all. Now this one in this pool isn't too big. It's maybe eight or nine foot at the max. But yeah, I'm gonna go jump on it and hopefully I can get it. Somebody once told me the world is gonna roll 